everyone snap to attention because it's time once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest or will uh, <laughs> to, to talk about the ever expanding Geekoverse or the half shrinking Geekoverse as we'll find out this week. Uh, we do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and on this episode is uh, someone who unfortunately survived the snap. I mean, uh, my hey. co-host, Mike Kafis. Hey, I'm all ready to talk about The Last Crusade. I got all my notes here. All ready. Right, good. Good. Fantastic. And joining us for this discussion that's nothing to do with The Last Crusade is <laughs> Will Conway. Uh, or Captain Yo. America, as as you all may, may notice. He's wearing his cap outfit hey will show us your cap outfit real quick look at that that is badass this is not i mean that's no joke of an outfit that is that's the real deal i love it yeah i All will right, be so wearing this to the opening showing as well cool fantastic oh when are you going you're going to the opening showing when uh six o'clock in white marsh on thursday night god damn thursday night oh i don't get to see it thursday till sunday night. oh so. mm. good luck avoiding yeah. spoilers till then yeah yeah it yeah, should be fine you know what I'm gonna to have to do the same thing because uh, I gotta. I'm, I'm trying to remember when I'm going, but since I'm going to the science center, I think that's May the third. Yeah, you're so, going next Friday. I'm actually yeah. seeing it for a second time already Sunday morning with some other friends. Nice. So I will have seen it twice before you guys see it once. Nice. That's, I mean, I, I look. I decided that you know alcohol was worth worth it. Alcohol and games <laughs> and just a, a, I know a, a cool a cool experience. So Mike, you're. So. I mean, Will's going to an event because he's going the Thursday evening. It's going to be an event because it's going to be all kinds mm -hmm. of shit going on. Um, you're going to an event because you know it's going to be the IMAX thing and and going to a movie that that is uh, presented as an event is awesome. I, I did the the. Mm -hmm. the, the um, the Christmas one for Hateful Eight, where they did uh, mm. Quentin Tarantino. They presented it. There was an intermission. There was all this stuff they gave out. It was a special showing with special filming techniques. Uh, it was That's really awesome. neat. So, so it's, it's worth it. But I, I got to travel. So I got to get what I can get. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, sorry, buddy. <laughs> so we're, we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking all about uh, uh, in game. Uh, and our predictions and, and what happened with uh, with with uh, um, Infinity War. But before we do that, we've got some business to take care of, and we, let's do it quick, Mike. Mike, you have a present. yes. You have, you have two presents. <laughs> Last, Last week was Mike's week birthday. Was my birthday, and I got a box, and I got a cylinder. So. Pete's trying to upstage me, even though, like, you know, I personally hand-delivered his in a Home Depot. It may have cost me $30 to get all the hardware and glue it all together and all. But, you know, it's good. Hey, hey man, thanks. Recycling. Open that thing up quick. We got a lot to talk about. All right, all right, all right. I'm scared. So I'm scared. Hey, hey, Pete, as I'm doing this, why don't you run through some of the things that you have got me in the past? Uh, well, I got him a, a bag of dicks one year. That was pretty mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah. And it sang to him, you got a bag of dicks, bag of dicks. I got him the microphone he's using right now. Uh, I got him a banana keeper. A keyboard. Okay, so you know what? Like, there's something special about that keyboard. Oh, that is a keyboard. I'll bet you I know. Yeah. You can hook it up to multiple Bluetooth devices, up to three Bluetooth devices at once. So you could use one keyboard and you could switch between computers. Nice. So, so oh, so we, what you're saying is I don't have to have this keyboard laying on top of my laptop and then have to be typing ahead and behind. Is that what you're saying? Yes, because all the time, like, so I was like, God damn it, wrong keyboard. You know, we're doing the show and he's like, so he could do he, that, that. You can hook that into any Bluetooth device and. You could uh, you can switch right between them. You just got to you know, function one, function two, function three, whatever it is, whatever buttons they are. Cool. And I made sure nice. it had all the numbers. All it does have all the numbers. Um, um, zero all the way to nine. Well, well, I meant all the characters. It's a full keyboard because they make other ones like that that are lesser keyboards that, that are only like partial cool. keyboards. So there you awesome, go. Awesome, man. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. All right, man. And then, and then this is my penis stretcher because I specifically remember asking you for a penis stretcher. Yeah. I mean, everyone's no, everyone's you motherfucker! <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Do I do I need to do I need to show everyone what these are? Huh? <laughs> that, uh, yes, in keeping with the tradition, huh? Yes. 
Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. You know what? I, I'm going to have to show everyone this. I know you don't like this, Pete. But uh, this, this, this is the... Uh, <laughs> This is what I have to deal with for the rest of the goddamn show. So beautiful. beautiful. Yes. That's awesome. So just so you know, while we're doing this show, Mike is gonna be covered in dicks. I just he, wanted to Yes. Do I in fact am. So it works. I am it uh so uh, you know, it's funny because I went and I said, let me look and see what this place is. And it says on here posters are us and i went and i looked right before i got online i went and looked at it and i was like some some site came up you know what i mean and i'm like oh wow that's interesting what the kind of poster did he get me uh it can't be one of these really <laughs> extravagant ones no no it's just a farce because i got i got uh glitter dicked is what yeah. i guess i got nice <laughs> jenny jenny tight fuck you pete <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got to clean it up Oh, that's awesome. All right, come on. Let's get on with it. We got we got business to take care of. All right. God damn you. So, <laughs> good one. That's a good one. That's good. So, we're, we're doing Avengers Infinity War tonight. Uh, we're not Infinity War. We're doing it's an in-game pre-show. So, let, we'll start with Infinity War because it it left a taste in the mouth. It, it, it ended on a note that has to be addressed. A note? Christ, it ended. I mean, I was depressed. I, yeah. the, the I credits mean, were just... going by like a death toll. Yes. Yes. All right. First of all, I have watched this movie three or four times. And, you know, I watched it as, as early as a couple days ago. I don't want anyone to make fun of me because I'm covered in dicks right now. But, <laughs> like, I kind of cry every time Peter Parker goes. I, I fucking know. cry. I, I can't blame you for that. Yeah, and 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 uh, Will, I'm gonna let you talk after I say this. That and my favorite from because we're gonna talk as much as we can about Endgame. Um, but my favorite line, I think, from um, Infinity War was, uh, "Mr. Stark, I'm being beamed up." <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, well, what do you what do you got, Will? What is uh, what kind of Obviously, I went to the opening showing for this. Generally, when I go to opening showings for Marvel movies, there's like a, you're a round of applause while the you know the credits are first rolling. Dead silence in my theater. Just mm-hmm. dead, we were just what, and then you get to the part where even like where it shows Avengers Infinity War, you see all the big cast names, and even that gets like dusted away. And just like, ooh, yeah, that sums up that movie. <laughs> yeah, that movie hit like everything along the emotional spectrum. It did. It was, it was, it's just like dead, dead silence in the theater. Yeah. You're right. And, and I said it before, but, you know, I'll repeat, you know, my, my, my daughter loves Tom Holland. I mean, like, lo- she has a crush on him. Great and, cast for Spider-Man. And she, when he died, when he dusted, she looked at me and I thought she was going to, like, just, just burst into tears. And she probably was. But I, I, uh, I saved the moment by saying... Don't worry, honey. Sony won't let Sony won't. Let, he belongs to Sony. They won't let they won't let uh, Marvel kill that. He'll be back. There's a sequel next year. D- Spider Man's gonna be saved. He'll come back. And she was like, "Are you sure?" I was just like, "Yes, he'll be fine. Don't worry. It's a temporary thing. It's gonna be fine." I had to talk her off the cliff, man. I thought she was gonna lose it right <laughs> then and there. She still gets mad at me because I pick on her by saying, uh, "I'm always like," I, I look at her, London. I don't feel so good, in London. And she's like, Stop oh it. God, <laughs> you're such an ass. I know, right? I, I remember uh, when I took one of my friends to go see it. He was a huge fan of Winter Soldier, rightly so, because it's a great movie. But I remember when they got to the, so the first person you see dusted is Bucky, and so we watch him dust. I just look at everyone and see my friend go like, "What? No!" And I just remember thinking to myself, "Oh, oh, it is far from over." <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, so hey, let's let's do the let's do the uh the count here. We got uh we got the dead. So uh and, and when I say dead, I don't mean dusted because I th- I really think you have to count them separately because dead and dusted are yeah. two different things, right? I think the dead people are dead dead. It could be. All right, start start with the dead people. Go ahead. Who do you got? We got we got Loki, Heimdall, yeah. Gamora, Ooh. Vision, and then of course we have to be sad because it's Ebony Mob Proxima Midnight, Call Obsidian, and Corvus Glaive. We're so sad okay. that they're gone. Barring any unforeseen time time 
traveling things, Proxima Midnight is 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 shredded. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Ebony Mall is floating in the vacuum of space. Yeah, yeah. I just, just so, gotta admit though, they had the best names. Ebony yeah, Mall, oh, yeah. Proxima Midnight, Call of City. Those are just cool ass names. Yeah, where's Shazam though? You know what I mean? Ay, ay, ay. Um, and then we have the Snapped. So you have Black Panther, Spider Man, Doctor Strange, Bucky Barnes, Falcon, Scarlet Witch, Star Lord, Groot, Drax, Mantis, Nick Fury, Maria Hill, Hank Pym, Hope Pym, Janet Van Dyne, and Shuri. By the um, way, should we be saying spoilers for a year old movie at this point? <laughs> no, fuck no. Not with our fans. If our fans have a, you know, if we're spoiling them, mm-hmm. then they, they're watching the wrong show. Yep. Fair enough. Did um, you say Rocket? You said Rocket, didn't you? No, no, Rocket's Rocket alive. Rocket is alive. Did he? He is yep. the sole remaining guardian. Yes, he's the only uh, one left. So, yeah, okay. okay, so a lot. Well, I don't know. It depends on whether you count. Um, do you count. Uh, Nebula? What's her? Nebula. Do you count yes. her? Yes, I do count Nebula. I do not. Um, oh, like she fought briefly with them for a time, but I don't. I don't yet count her as a guardian. If she comes oh, back in Guardians Three and, and and fights more with the team, I, I would count her as a guardian. But at the moment, I do not. She's still too much of a lone wolf. Okay, apologies. I thought you were just talking about do you count her as alive? I'm like, well, oh, yeah. No, yeah, she's, she's alive. Well, she's definitely alive. <laughs> yeah. So alive is Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Hulk, War Machine, Rocket, Nebula. Okoye, who I can't remember who that is, Mbaku, uh, Ant Man, Hawkeye, who is maybe maybe Ronan now, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, he is. Captain Marvel, Pepper Potts, Valkyrie, Wong, and Happy Hogan. Um, Okoye is uh, the leader of the Dormelage Black Panther Guard. Okay, I mean I knew it was from Black mm-hmm. Panther. I can't remember which guy he was. Now uh, it's, it's, it's questionable. That, uh, she, when he went, sorry, she, when he got snapped away. When he went to go, hey, yo, Okoye, this is no place to die. That that was her. Right. Okay. Now I got it. it I got it's it. It's questionable whether the sister who was the technophile is alive or not, right? Nope. I believe that she has nope. been confirmed to be snapped. They released a bunch of posters a little while ago yep. where the ones that were in color were the ones who survived and the ones who were blacked out were the ones who got snapped. And she was the one black and white ones. And that's how we know the Valkyrie's alive. Yeah, that's true. But I just—you never saw her die. You all you saw her is fall over a, a thing. But she's that. But they put it on the poster, and that was an official Marvel release. And yep. in the trailer, there's a uh, Captain America is looking at uh, pictures of people who are dead, and she's in one of those pictures. Yeah. Well, that hey, is you know, not necessarily something to go by because if you notice, they also have a picture of Ant Man on there, who is alive. They're just not aware. Of. Right. Right. Okay. Right. And and also, far be it from uh, Marvel to never deceive us in trailers and what posters you because you know they, hashtag Hulk. So they have actually him? confirmed, like the Russo brothers were directly asked about this, and they said yes. Some of the footage that you have shown is not in the movie, and or has been doctored. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh, MIA is the collector because we never actually see what happens to him. Like I would suspect he's dead. Well, yeah, but yeah, don't... but he he's is not... the brother of the game master guy, right? And they are yeah. not the grandmaster, but they're not celestials. They're Eternals? what do you call those? They are. Uh, I can't remember. I, think, of I the believe universe? they were Eternals in the uh, in the comics, but I could be wrong with that. All right. Yeah. So anyway, um, and you got Ned. I, I know that they're they're one of the eldest beings in the universe. They're a lot more powerful than comics here in the movies. Sure. Yeah. Then you got Ned, who's Spider Man's sidekick, and MJ, who we don't know if they're alive or dead or what. Um, so I suspect we might not even know until after Endgame. Sure. Or, it just might never even be confirmed. Yeah, Which really ones? Anyway, right? <laughs> uh, Ned and MJ. Mm. Or Aunt May. We don't know about Aunt May either, do we? No, but God, I hope she's alive. Oh, she's. Uh, she's well, she's alive because Happy Hogan hits on her in Spider Man Field Trip movie. No, that's... Uh, we don't know the placement of that, though, either. We don't, we're, we don't wear in a timeline that falls. Uh, we do. It falls after. Well, then that then maybe they got uh, that was, back. I heard that was, that was confirmed. I so believe. we don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but I saw we it confirmed they, they, they were snapped because Spider-Man's in that, too. So. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Um, so, Mike, you had you and, you and Will were talking about the different names for the uh, the event. 
Oh, yes. So, um, and, you know, anyone in the chat room, please um, uh, add to any of these. But I was looking around, and all we were able to find is the official term, which is called uh, the decimation, which we're not going to get too pedantic, but that is not a decimation, especially 50% or 10% or 100%. Um, but um, there's the snapping, which uh, I'm – Will is you're fond of correct? I like that one. Yeah, that's probably my favorite uh, of them. I think I'm I'm pretty fond of Snapocalypse and uh, the Thanosification uh, is pretty good. Pete, do you uh, do you have a favorite out of these or something else you came across? Uh, no, you know I, I, the snapping is what I've been seeing everywhere. I, I actually didn't even see these other ones. I don't know how I missed all these different names that they're called. Um, but but I like I like the snap. I think the snapping is perfect. Um, but I, I want to mention that Jay Libby's in the room, and Jay loves Thanos. It's like his buddy, I think his favorite guy. Mm -hmm. And he said that if he had the gauntlet, he'd snap. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, Jay Libby is is he's all for he's Team Thanos. Team, team Thanos. Yes. Hmm. Hashtag Thanos did nothing wrong. <laughs> Thanos did nothing wrong. That's funny. All right, so hey, let's let's talk about what the stones do. So w this is a discussion that Mike and, and Will and I have kind of had in the background. and I mean, we're not the only ones, obviously. But we're talking about, like, what each stone did, you know, as part of this, uh, as part of the snap. Like, what, what role each stone played. Um, I have my feelings on it, and I, I found something online that I that was kind of like the basis of, of what I put together. But, uh, you know, feel free to disagree because no one has ever really confirmed exactly what they do during the snap. Like, we know what powers they have, but we don't know exactly how they play into the snap. So, right. I started with, uh, so I, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll start if it's okay. I like, so the Space Stone, um, I say that allows the gauntlet to affect those things outside of his immediate area. It extends his range. In other words, whatever it is he's doing, he can do... Further, it just extends the range further away from just like his vicinity. Well, I would say any anything having to do with travel. I mean, getting from one place to another or extending the reach of the effectiveness of any of the other stones to I understand, to I'm either bring just, something to him or take something you know away. I'm not talking about what it does. We all know what they do. I'm talking about as as for, for the, the snap, snap itself, just for the snap in particular. Right. Well, uh, none, no dust survived. So if you say that the reality stone somehow that was how everyone was able to reality stone now. Well, 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 well I'm, I'm saying that I'm the space stone had to because not there was there would have been with that many people and dust. I mean, I think it all went away at some point. I don't know if there was people sweeping up New York. Um, they don't. They don't dust. show the dust disappearing in the movie. Though. Well. In but fact, even if it did, at the end credit scene for Ant Man and the Wasp, you just see the piles of dust where the three, the three of them disappeared. Done, and it doesn't, doesn't show any of that being swept away by the wind or either. Oh my mm. god! Five billion piles of dust. Right, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like it had to went somewhere. <laughs> well, no, even if or, it did, or it you don't need the space stone for that. The reality stone could handle that. The reality stone turned them into nothing. Right. That's see. That's what I'm saying. I think the reality stone is what made everybody poof, like literally poof. Um, I think the space stone is gave it the range so he could do the whole universe. But, I mean, the space stone wouldn't give you that much distance because basically every one of these things that we're going to talk about, I'm going to end with the power stone, and the power stone just amplifies all the other stones to get them to that cosmic level. So just assuming any one mm -hmm. of these, I say the power stone is already an, in effect. So space stone allows them to do the whole universe. The reality stone allows him to do the dusting. The mind stone allows him to find sentient life because that's it. It wasn't any other life. It was only sentient life. Cows didn't dust. Dogs uh, didn't dust. Ants didn't I dust. I actually think that, I think that might be wrong. I think that uh, Kevin Feige confirmed it was all life. Did he say so, that? And Animals included, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the mind stone still <laughs> finds living things. Yeah. Yeah, it, is, um, yeah, it still applies. Right. Yeah, but then what do you need the soul stone for? Okay. The soul stone... The soul stone is the one stone that is is the most sentient of them all. It is like a, it's like a creature into itself. They all seem to have some semblance of sentience, but the soul stone, like it's the it's the special stone. It actually enacted a price to get it. So I'm gonna say that the soul stone is the one that chooses the half the life. That's the one that has the ability to go. You get to live and you get to die. 
I like that it's theory. The arbiter of um, what lives and what dies. We also soul have stone. no idea. Unlike the other stones, we actually have no idea what the soul stone does. Right. Uh, I don't think there might have been one. So I rewatched it recently. In my beginning of the end game. You're watching one movie a week up to the end game. There might have been one time in the in the fight on on Titan where he used the soul stone. I think it was where he turned uh, the all the fire from Tony into like birds or whatever to chase him. I believe I could be wrong about that. It was hard to tell between the reality stone and the soul stone. Um, mm-hmm. But that was that's a, a maybe. So if he didn't use it there, he didn't use it at all. Um, so we have no idea what the powers of the stone are. So another potential thing, and I, I think I saw this somewhere. We might have mentioned at some point about how. Uh, all of those people who got snapped away might be in the soul stone. Right, they so might, might be in the soul stone. They right. might be containing their soul, souls, for lack of a better word. Right, because the, the they may not be able to destroy souls. Like the none of these stones may able may be able to actually destroy a soul. So the soul stone might have to imprison the souls because that's the only thing it can do with them. Like you right. can't obliterate them. I don't know. I, I, we're all guessing. These are all guesses. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I also like how you brought up the. the the soul stone might be more sentient. I, I really like the idea of the young Gamora that, that Thanos briefly talks to in the soul stone. But that's not, so I never really thought that, that was actually Gamora. So I really like the idea that that's just the sentience of the soul stone talking to him through a familiar uh, right. visage. Yeah. Now, but, but then again, what about the mind stone? I would have thought that the mind, well, the, the mind stone can help him control and interact with all of the other stones simultaneously, getting everything to act as it needs to act. But I also thought Maybe. that, like, the mind stone had something to do with the um, randomness of um, just choosing 50%. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, but yeah. I'm just thinking that if you're talking about life or death, the thing that flips the coin, in my opinion, is the soul stone. That's mm. that's the cosmic coin flipper, as far as I'm concerned. That's like God. You know what I mean? Like, like the soul stone is, is is the 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 the, the, the soul of the universe, right? Who gets to choose? Who gets to live and die? Who better than the soul? I I don't know. That's just my take. I don't know. I sold my soul stone for five dollars. So and then we got time, and and I don't understand this one. So, so time is the one I've always had the biggest issue with. Mm-hmm. Someone online said time would say allow the effect to happen all at once, and mm-hmm. I guess that's what I heard too. I, I guess so. I I'll disagree with that just because we see it not happening at the same time. That's like true. even even if you just say it, maybe all the ones on Earth happen at the same time because they're in different areas. The ones on Titan, one hundred percent happen in sequential order. Well, then you have um, to also ask cinematically: Are we just seeing it happen? Right. You know, but well, did but, it really but manifest but again, simultaneously? So I, so I could I could accept that for all the snaps on Earth, but on Titan, sure. it's like it's absolutely like it is one shot, and they are sequential. Like it's Mantis goes, and then Drax goes, and then Peter goes, and then Peter goes. Well, yeah, because you don't want to sit there and have to see them all in the. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm claiming cinematics. But, but it's, it's, we're going by what's shown in the movie, though. So there's evidence in the sure. movie that it doesn't happen at once. So I, I saw somewhere else, and this, again, we might have mentioned it already. Um, I, I actually really like the idea that the soul or the time stone is what made the effects permanent. Because if you saw on mm. in the Collector's Emporium, when he used the reality stone of Drax and Mantis, as soon as he was gone, they reverted back to normal. Yeah, that's so the true. Time stone, the time stone could be what makes the reality stones dusting a permanent thing and not just a temporary thing. Uh, right, because you're altering reality, but then reality, reality has to return to normal. By using right. the time stone, you're making reality permanent. Yep. Okay. All right. I dig it. I dig it. Hey, from a role-playing standpoint, that makes even more sense because if it was a role-playing game, you couldn't have a power where you could just turn somebody into, like, you know, blocks because then it would be like, <laughs> oh, that's just way too powerful. They'd have to revert back, you know, just – because of rules balance, and I always like to equate everything to a role playing game. <clears throat> <All right. laughs> I now want to focus on the um, time stone, if if we can, and focus okay. on um, some things that I've heard. And I actually had uh, this thought independently um, uh, about two times ago when I watched the movie. Um, the stones glow when they're active. Um, there is a specific glow. When, from the time it leaves um, Doctor Strange's hand to yep. the time it reaches Thanos' hand, it is glowing, yep. which means it is acting. Um, I, I, uh, Will, what do you think? Is that something that is going to be a factor, or is that well, sort of a MacGuffin? Like you're, you're jumping the gun, man. You're jumping the gun. That's part of the, that's part of the theories, man. Well, it, it fits now. 
All right, fine. Go ahead. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> That's part of the theories, man. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. So I, I actually had a friend who tagged me at something recently that was along the lines of like the entirety of Endgame could just be like a time loop that Doctor Strange set in motion in Infinity War because of all this stuff. So I think that actually really like there's precedent for it. Like you put a time loop in his own movie, there's no problem. So like it's it's not outside the realm of possibility. I feel like mm. setting an entire three-hour-long movie, however long this is going to go, would be probably a little too unrealistic. Because also, we've seen in the trailers that there's going to there's there's a large time that's going to elapse between, I think, the beginning scene and the following yeah. scene. Yeah. So we Years. start... We'll, we're going to start the movie with Black Widow. And Black Widow is the most evident factor of this. So we start the movie <laughs> with Black Widow with her blonde hair. But we have seen many, many, many shots of her with long hair and had it mostly red again, except for the tips. So I think that the, so in the most recent trailer we saw them all sitting around and they're like oh yeah you use the stones again let's go fight them now, uh, and I think that's going to be like the beginning scene I think they're probably all going to get their asses kicked again and then I think after that it's going to there might be like a jump of like a year or two. I I think that's pretty uh, most most likely I agree um, it's going to take well, they're probably going to do all that uh, and before Stark gets there. Yeah, I think um, so too. Um, so I think having that large of a time, I don't think that that will be a time limit. But uh, I think we're uh, we're getting too far into what we what we want to talk about predictions. Uh, Pete, is there anything else we want to cover before we uh, jump yes, to predictions? Yes. Let, let, let's talk about what we know. All right. So sure, we're into end game now, right? So we're 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 done with Infinity War. We're we're into end game now. Uh, what do we know? We know that Scott Lang escapes the quantum realm on his own, right? We're pretty sure of that because she's done no before. One, what she's done before, right? He's the only one who knows he's there. Right, so there was there. He has to have escaped it on his own. Um, we also know that there are sequels for Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Black Panther. And as I said before, Spider-Man belongs and, to Sony. They cannot kill Strange. him off. And oh, and Doctor Strange too. Right. So all those people who have died have sequels that have. I mean, you know. Hey, they, hey, who, who are you, Deadpool? Are you Deadpool? You know all this stuff. What are you? <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, just I saying. really wish they hadn't spoiled who, what franchises are continuing until after Endgame. I wish they'd had yeah. the foresight to think about that. Yeah. Um, or it's just all just an elaborate ruse, and none of them are getting sequels, and that would be hysterical. That would be funny, mm. but I don't. That's not the case. And Spider Man's definitely coming back again. They can't kill Sony's property off. Sony would be so pissed off. They'd be like, "You can't. Well, that's our money." So all that they would do is, is they would just. Stop having Spider-Man in the MCU. So if you go back to making Spider-Man at that point, yeah, but they've got. But they I mean, they've wouldn't got so be. Much, they wouldn't make as much money because the yeah, MCU they've got so much traction on that character. And, and yeah, Tom Holland's he's the best Spider-Man ever. Oh, he yep. absolutely is. So, all right, so like people, we don't know? people can have their their favorites, but Tom Holland is the most comic accurate Spider-Man. True. So what don't we know? We all right? Are the souls dead? We, are they within the Soul Stone? There. People say, you know, they're likely in the Soul Stone, and if you're following the comics, that's pretty much what happens, right? So, I think no, actually, but it's a very tentative no, just because, again, we have no idea what the Soul Stone's powers are yet. So, I think because we don't, there's really why we can't answer that. I, for, and I can't even really say why I would say no. I just, like, that's where I tend to lead on this. Okay. Well, how familiar are you with reading, and Pete as well, how familiar are you with reading Infinity Gauntlet as far as the comics? I know that we're, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but um, is there any comparisons and or things that we can glean from? Nope. I haven't read any of them. I, okay. I have read Infinity Gauntlet. I've read Infinity Wars. Uh, I think there's at least one other Infinity storyline that I've read. Uh, so the snap in the Infinity Gauntlet actually happens at like the, almost the beginning of the graphic novel. So Thanos just snaps. Almost all the heroes are still alive, so they all come up to uh, to Thanos because he's not on Earth when he does this either. So he, they come up to Thanos and they all fight him there. There's no none of the some of the heroes are like I think like Hawkeye gets snapped away and uh, a couple others, but it's not very many. Um, there's still like a horde of superheroes that come and fight him. Of course, they stand no chance at all. He's also much much more omnipotent with the gauntlet in the comics than he is in movies. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, he has the gauntlet for a long time in the, yeah, pretty in much the, the entirety of, of the novel almost. So it's Galactus and then like several Galactus level beings all attack him at once and he just kind of like waves his hand and beats them all. 
Right. Like he's he is actually unstoppable in the comics. Right. I thought I would just none of this like smoking gauntlet or anything like that. Right. What's that? Not even eternity. eternity can stop him. And eternity. Yeah, eternity, like, eternity was one of the ones who tried to fight him in battle. Yeah. And he, he just like turns the motor stone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Warlock ended up doing it in the comics, correct? And the only reason they were able to do that was because they basically just used his own arrogance against him. Right. 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 Like they were we able to trick the Gauntlet off of him. It wasn't. There was no question. It was not a power match. But and I would just like to point out, seen Adam Warlock yet? No. Right. But he's he, not going to have an appearance like Guardians Three, apparently. Right. Yeah, he's baking. He's still baking. Um, I, I I just want to point out though that um, the my Lord and Savior Deadpool did manage to get the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos um, and steal the Thanos copter because not a lot of people know about the Thanos copter either. Yeah. Uh, and had a, um, a, a, a he set the entire universe to have a roast for him and then got pissed off because he didn't know what a roast was and then snapped everything back to the way it was, which was miserable, and then gave the Infinity Gauntlet back to Thanos and said it was too much trouble. He didn't want it. <laughs> that sounds like a very Deadpool thing to do, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, my wife said that so long as Paul Rudd is still alive and uh, and um, Loki, if if they want to bring Loki back, that's good too. So other than that, it's okay and kill everybody. <laughs> but I think Paul Rudd will survive. I'm pretty sure Loki's actually dead in the movie. Now he has been confirmed. Tom Hiddleston is confirmed to be returning for a Loki mini series on Disney Plus. But that could but be a pre. It could absolutely. We have no idea what the timeline is for the first. Right. So they've confirmed uh, Loki. They, I think they've confirmed Scarlet Witch and Vision, but that one might not be 100 percent yet. They've confirmed a, a What If series, and they've confirmed uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is basically like, give you a, a huge buddy cop thing, which is awesome. God, they've actually even started working yeah. for that. I love What If. I love What If was one of the best. Series yeah, well, of I'm. I'm pretty excited for What If. All right, so so. Go ahead, Mike. And, and one of the things um, that uh, I think actually Paul is has a good point about when we're talking about Spider-Man is that um, they, he did say that the Spider-Verse did kill, technically kill Peter Parker, even though it was like a futuristic Peter Parker. And you could still s technically say that the cinematic universe is a separate. This is my answer to what he was saying is the cinematic universe is a separate um, universe from the that that particular spider-verse but mm -hmm. um that's a good point so they have they have designations for all their different universes so like the 616 oh, yeah. universe is the main line comic universe which i don't even think we i don't even think the peter parker who died in spider-verse was the 616 parker um because there were like he had like blonde hair and something like that. so there were even like small differences with that so i actually don't even think we saw the 616 peter in spider-verse and obviously tom holland is in the 616 and they have a designation for the movie universe too but i can't remember what it is <gasps> Oh, Paul! You know what? Bad, bad boy. He just called. He just called Ant Man the Jar Jar Binks of the cinematic universe. No, I would not say he's that bad. Bad. No. I, I Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck is the Jar Jar Binks. That I would agree with. Which is why he was reduced to cameos. Right. <laughs> he's there for the people who know the joke that they can have a laugh, and if you don't know it, it doesn't. It's irrelevant because he's got like ten seconds of screen time total. All right, let's stay on track. Let's stay on track. So, is because we got stuff to go through. Is is Thanos in the Soul Stone? I say yes. I think that is an absolute yes. I is say it's an absolute no. Is he no? in? Wait, uh, uh, Pete, clarify. Is he in the Soul Stone? You mean did he snap himself out of existence? Not out of existence. The the Soul Stone, at least in the comics, is a pocket universe. It's a pocket universe right. within there, and you can live within it. I think he went in there. I disagree. I, I, I'm with uh, Will. Go ahead. What do you think, Will? Yeah, I was going to say, I just don't think that he is. I think he probably already had a spot picked out to go and just chill. Yeah, and, there's the new... Watch watch the sunrise on a Grateful Universe. Because you can't watch what the sunrise on a Grateful Universe if you're trapped in your own universe. Oh, no, I don't I don't mean is he permanently in there. I think, oh, no, yeah, I, I think... know. But I, I think that ending scene is, is literally him just on a different planet somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so do you think he went in and saw Gamora? Where do you think he saw Gamora? I think that's, that scene was definitely in the Soul Stone. Okay, and then you think he yeah. left the Soul Stone? With, with, with the little girl Gamora, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, I'll do that. I guess we'll find out, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 I, I, I think that uh, – I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll say that during the predictions. Okay, so it's Scott Lang when he comes out and he's like on the thing, hey, I know you remember me. I know you know Ant-Man. Is that in the past? Because the trailer seems to confirm that. 
So, yes and no on the trailer confirms it. So if you if you pay real close attention, you can see in the top left it says archive. Yes. But mm-hmm. then you also see Cap is standing up and he he, he asks, "Hey, is is this archive footage or whatever?" And she's like, "No, that's at the front door right now." Does she so say think, right now, or does she say that's at the front door? I'm I'm pretty sure she has a line that says that, like, "No, this is like happening at this moment." Like, I, I can't remember the exact line, but I'm pretty sure she see, she basically just, explicitly says no, that that's live data. I could have swore somebody zoomed in on it said archive and it had like a date of like it, 1984 or something no, on it. No, it's confirmed that 1984 is not the date. Um, okay. It's other numbers and stuff, um, okay. but it could be. Uh, it could be something um, sort of uh, – it's been theorized like he, it was in the past and he did that in the past and then it would be tripped when he did it again. Something about like if, if he escaped the quantum realm – this is one of the theories. If he escaped the quantum realm and actually had to wait it out underground, but he but the first thing he did when he got there is, is go, to, go to that place and, and try and see if anyone was there, but we no one was there We also see yet. in one of the other trailers we do see Paul Rudd. Out, it's like not in front of. We just see him like standing in a random telephone pole that says like, "Oh, these people are all missing." So like, he's very clearly in the present day, okay. post snapping. Okay, all right, I'll um, buy that. And and again, the Russos have confirmed that they've doctored a lot of footage from these trailers. Okay, mm-hmm. so what about um, Jonathan Reinhardt? You know what? Boo-hoo on your opinion. He said that Ant Man sucks donkey dick. You suck donkey dick. <laughs> I like Ant Man. It's one of my favorites. All right. So All anyway, right. so does 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 Scott? Sorry, does, sorry, Jonathan. That was pretty harsh. I'm kidding. <clears throat> A little bit. Uh, does <laughs> does Scott have Pim's lab uh, in the trailer? So there's a there's a trailer, and it looks like he's carrying like a suitcase with a handle on it. Um, mm-hmm. Does he have Pim's lab with him? He has the van. Right. right. Yeah, you mean like really what was question. it? Was it in the van, or did right. did he grab that van in the past? That's and a the good reason question. why that's important is for the theories. Is part of the theories of, of, of that we'll get into. If he has Pim's lab and he has Tony Stark, right? He's, There's a good uh, chance that he's got Pim's lab. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, if he comes out in present day, at least he's got the van with the quantum tunnel in it. Sure, sure. All right. Is there anything else we don't know that we that we should bring up? We. Uh, I don't know if this is a, that we don't know or is it a theory. So it's I'm it's going to use it as a bridge. Uh, are we or are we not going to use barf technology um, as part oh, of God. this plan? Maybe. I mean, it was prominent, and then they never did anything else with it. And usually, right. you know, when you're telling a story, you don't present something that that's that prominent that you don't do something with. Well, right. they're also good at doing a lot of retconning, or not even retconning, but just sort of, hey, like going back and watching old movies and going, oh, that's a good idea. Why don't we grab, why don't we grab that and then make that something, you know, for the future? Oh, you know what he's talking about, Will? No, I do not. The, the thing that oh, the Tony did when he recreated his parents. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. Civil War. Yeah. But but yeah, that was back in Civil War. So and they haven't touched it since then. So maybe that's not something that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't I don't see that making a comeback. Okay. I, you never know. I, I could be absolutely wrong. I I just don't think it would be. You know, like fake Thanos out with it. Like make him think that you know, like you know, setting up a a a, a theater so that Thanos thinks something's happened. So he, I don't know. Oh, I got him. I killed them all. And then, you know, they jump out psych and they pull the glove off his hand or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, David Benavides is asking, and I think he's just asking as in like, will Lady Death be any part of this? Um, I, I and highly I, doubt it. I, I think I, if they were going to use Lady Death, they would have brought her in an Infinity War. Uh, but they, yeah. they changed Thanos' motivation so much from the exactly. comics, which I think is a good thing. I think that it made him much more uh, relatable as a character and seem much more real as a character. Could they still retcon um, Hela, though? Uh, No, I think she's dead. Mm. I think sort of just straight up. Like, you see a little poof of green smoke when he stabs downward at the end of Ragnarok. I think she's actually dead. Yeah, I think she's dead. And if that didn't kill her, the explosion of the entirety of Asgard probably did. All right, I'm about to blow your mind, but maybe she was always dead. 
Yeah. So time travel. <laughs> <laughs> the big the big theory is that time travel is going to be how they fix everything. That's the biggest uh, yeah, theory out there that I've seen. Uh, it's a big theory. I know. Right. So no, I just, kind of everyone's hope it, scared. I kind of hope it isn't just because I'm always wary of just time travel used as a mechanic in storytelling. I think it's really, mm -hmm. really easy to screw up, but you, there is a way to do it correctly. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'd be, like people will point out things like, oh, they're, you know, they're on set with Avengers, your costume from the first Avengers, and this is proof and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, I'm not convinced. But we'll see. There is a line that could support this theory, actually, from the end of Ant-Man and the Lost in the post credit scene. Um, uh, Hope's mom, Janet, makes a comment about how, like, hey, don't get caught in the quantum entanglement field. And there's something about, like, hey, avoid the time travel loops that you can find in there. So yeah. there is no. precedence for it. If, if that is wind up how Ant-Man escapes from the quantum zone, it could be through... Uh, like a, a time pocket or something like that. Right. Uh, they are the time tardigrades. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that, that is a theory. Um, but there's also, you know, there's also the thought of time travel, like non quantum realm, which I think if they're going to do time travel, they're going to have to do that because if they made it like, again, they made a very specific point to talk about the time tunnels, um, you know, but it, it leads me into, uh, pictures behind the scenes pictures i've seen where they had these like devices on their hands and i don't mm -hmm. know what the heck that was in the picture yeah, i haven't like, seen those pictures where there was like a short amount of time where there were people were raving about that and then it just like it just, people started ignoring like we haven't seen anything else to support that since then again right true um you know is that is that a tony stark image? and then we got these white suits and like some people are saying that those are like the quantum realm suits like mm -hmm. they were wearing in Ant-Man and the Wasp, but maybe not someone else. Jay Libby seemed to think that was a Guardians of the Galaxy uniform or something. It's close to it. I've heard that, yeah. It's... So my my guess would be if they wind up using those suits that they're for quantum realm travel. Uh, I personally don't really like the suits, so I hope they don't use them very long. <laughs> um <laughs> But I actually also, because of how much the Russos are like, oh, yeah, we've definitely, like, there are scenes in the trailers that are, I would not be surprised if they never wound up using these suits in the movie. And it's just like, a, they're giant red herring. Oh, yeah, but they're selling toys. Like, would they sell a line of toys that was a yeah, giant? Yeah, yeah. The pictures of Still. the toys red herrings. Because I haven't actually seen anyone say, I got my toy. Well, yeah, they, they? they won't release I'm, the toy I'm until trusting, the I'm trusting nothing right now. Yeah. Right. Yep. Because that would be really funny to do if they if they actually put out like they made some prototypes of those toys and they said oh yeah these are going to be in stores and they never got sold like there were never yep. a toy that was sold it was just a misleading thing. They've also said that all the footage that they were going to show for promotional material was all within the first twenty minutes of the movie and there seems right. to be like a lot of stuff they showed to put into twenty minutes. So like sure. we have the scene where they're all sitting down and they're like hey we need to go fight Thanos again presumably they get their asses kicked but then like. Are we really going to get to those quantum realm suits in the first twenty minutes? Also, because I knew she Tony in one of those suits too in the trailer. Right, like, that's a lot get... to happen in twenty minutes. And you got to bring in Captain Marvel. So, so you've got to get yeah. you got to get them when together. You get Captain Marvel. Up. You got to bring in Ant Man. Yeah. You got to get the suits. You got to get you know, all in twenty minutes. Well, they actually don't need to worry about bringing her in because of her end credit scene in her movie. Okay. Which I haven't. Spoilers seen. if you haven't seen the movie. That's all right. That's all right. The end credit scene is the most important part for Endgame. <laughs> Wait, yeah, wait, wait uh, the first one or the second one? I don't. It came out before Shazam. No, no, no. I'm talking about the um, the end credit scene. Oh, the, end credit, the, first the, the first end credit scene. Okay, all right. Because the first end credit scene was in present time. Shit! Why am I forgetting what it was? <laughs> Someone typed Ant Man as an ant, like Uncle, like Ant Man, and then Terry <laughs> says, "I just can't wait to see Ant Man." Ant Man would be. It's just, oh, Ant Man would be cool. That'd be like it'd be like a like a transsexual type movie or something, you know? Ant Man, that'd be cool. <laughs> I like Mrs. Dunbar. Man from Uncle Ant Man. <laughs> right, it'd be you know, and it's, the power would be. It is ma'am. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yep. All right, never mind. I went there. All right, so <clears throat> another theory was uh, that they are that they are dead in the soul stone, which I'm not buying one bit. Yeah, that, I don't what, buy that either. What we actually saw, what we thought were the survivors were the ones that died, and all the people that dusted were actually the ones that survived and reversed, and I'm not buying that one one bit. 
See, because I guarantee you what's going to happen is that the impetus... So, everyone's raving about, like, Captain Marvel. She's going to be, like, a powerhouse and blah, blah, blah. The impetus for the final conclusion of the arc of this movie is going to come back to the original six of eight. So There is a reason that those six were yeah. all left on snap. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, Absolutely. Peter, we got 15 minutes-ish, so um, i just making that aware, making you aware of that, because I want to maybe we go around now and say what our general theory of wh- how things are going to play out. I mean, if we have one. I do have one, so I could go first if or if someone else wants to go. It doesn't matter. No, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. So my theory is they're going to end up, they're going to try and go after him, and they're going to realize there's no way they can do it. Um, just head on. However, um, there will be, it's going to be like kind of like time travel. Um, I, I can't exactly, uh, and I, I'm not going to predict exactly how this is going to happen, but there are going to be ways that they're going to be going back in time to events that have happened in the past, like New York, like other times when they've interacted with the stones and had the, had a chance to alter a stone's um, uh I guess, outcome or destiny, and they're going to just do very few minor things. And I think how possibly how we're going to lose, um, what's his face, Stark, because I, be- I think it's likely Stark's going to die. And it's going to be having something to do with it. He can't send that nuke up there um, like he did, doing altering that particular act. But I could be wrong. But um, on that particular very finite detail, but basically um, altering um, so that it, it's a little bit harder for Thanos to get the stones the way he did to give them time, their former selves time and um, the ability to stop him. I think that's how it's going to be. That's that's where I'm putting my chip down on. Okay. So subtle changes in time to give them. Why are you looking at me like I have two heads? I said so subtle changes in time yeah. Yeah, to yeah, give yeah. them the advantage when they need it. Yes. Okay. What do you think, Will? Uh, so most of my predictions are, just, are rather vague. Um, I don't really want to make any predictions on time travel or quantum realm stuff because I, I just think I could go. There are so many different ways I could go. It's not even funny. Um, I think that. The like I already said, the final impetus for saving the day is going to come down to the six Avengers, and I think that their one or all of them will sacrifice themselves to ensure that it's done. Uh, I think in order of the big three, the Avengers Prime, as I always call them, Cap, Thor, and Iron Man. I think in order for most likely to die, the least likely to die, it would be Cap, uh, Iron Man, Thor. Um, I think they I I think Cap is probably going to die. I think there's a good chance that Tony will die. I think the rest of them could survive. Um, I better goddamn hear Captain America say Avengers Assemble in this movie. God damn it, it better freaking happen. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I hope it does too. So I think there's a couple things that I think. I think I think Captain America is going to have to sacrifice himself. Uh, but I think Tony will have to put the glove on and activate it. I think he'll operate the glove. And the reason why I say this because this theory I've been reading – and it's just – it's too good to not be true, so I want to believe it. You know what I mean? It's like one of those, like, I don't know that I really believe it, but I want to because it's so awesome. That every movie, his arm, there's something with his left arm. He always has a problem with his left arm. And I think there's some kind of like like this – like, you know, there's something that happens to him in the future that he's feeling the effects of into the past. And I think he's going to activate – he's going to have to activate the glove or he's going to take it on to activate it. Uh, Captain America's going to have to pay the price. Both of them are going to be taken out of the superhero game because of it. Um, I think that Loki, I think Loki's not dead. I think Agreed. Loki, I think Loki made a hologram of himself or made some kind of illusion of himself that Thanos killed, killed, and that Loki was imitating Banner. I like that theory. I think that's awesome. And I watched so I- the thing and I was like, oh, that that would be so perfect. But I don't think Loki's dead. I really don't because I think. This it's Loki. If and if he's not dead, I'm not mad because that's what Loki does. I mean, that's that's just what Loki does. Yeah. He yeah. fucking tricks people. He's the trickster god. Uh, so I think that Loki is actually dead, and I I do like the theory that he's actually Bruce Banner. But I think the the biggest piece of evidence for why he isn't is that there are times when Bruce Banner is completely alone. There's no one else around him, and he's still trying to bring the Hulk out. Like the the scene at the beginning when 
Um, Wong shoots him in there, or Dr. Strange shoots him in the Central Park, and he's trying to get the Hulk out. There's no one around him when he, like, minorly hulks out and looks like, no, there's there's just no one around him at that point. Or he might have emerged. Hold on. Loki knows magic. Like, Loki's like a, I mean, he's like a wizard, like, magic-wise. Yeah. It's possible he merged with Banner, and that's why the Hulk couldn't come out, because Loki's, like, fucking with that whole jive. I don't know. I'm just saying it was kind of a cool thing. I think it's likely. I think that whatever it is, Banner is not aware. Banner is Banner. He's there. Yes. It's not Loki yes. pretending to be Banner. Right. But maybe he is, like you were saying, sort of inside um, the Hulk or something. You know, he's like in the Hulk's alter ego. Right. And like if the Hulk were to come out, Loki would be popped out. And that's why Loki's trying to prevent it or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I also think that... Um... I think that uh, I think there's going to be time travel. I, I do. I, I, you know, like it or not, I think there's going to be time travel. I just I feel like there's just there's too much. All even though the Russo brothers have said that um, that all the theories are wrong, that everybody's theories out there are wrong. They've they've read them all and they're all wrong. Um, wow. Which would be That's cool. Blank. I mean, if they do so, like a really cool story so, that nobody's hit on yet, that'd be neat. To go along with that, I just want to share. This is completely non-spoiler. Uh, one of my friends just sent me the, one of the first social media reactions to this movie. I'm just going to read it as, as verbatim. Go okay. on ground. You are not ready for Avengers Infinity War. All you have to know is avoid all spoilers. Seriously. Go in knowing as little as possible the Russo Brothers did the impossible. Nice. Okay, good. Although hey, that I'll does say... Him. Oh, no, never mind. That's uh, fake news. Sorry. That was published 23 April 2018. It didn't say Infinity War, so my friend sent me a false link. Oh, sucker. All right. Hey. And the last thing I want to say, and then we'll get on to the game. What do you guys think about the theory that Galactus is actually the Power Stone and that uh, at the end of all of this, the Power Stone is going to be destroyed, or not destroyed, but broken open and will release Galactus? I've heard a theory about that, and, and this is the defense for it, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, it says, Infinity Stones are explained to be the concentrated singularities that predate the beginning of the universe. In the comics, Galactus himself is a force that existed before the Big Bang. And the staff of the Celestial that had the stone in it when they destroyed the world, when Thing puts down the staff and destroys the world, that staff looks almost exactly like Galactus's head. Power Stone is purple. Galactus is purple. What say you? Uh, it's not a terrible theory, even if Aside from what I'm about to say, I probably still wouldn't think that that's uh, what the case, just because it seems just a little too far fetched for me. But uh, the biggest reason why I say no is because I don't think they got the rights in time for this movie. Like even for a put, like maybe, maybe for a, a very, very last minute post credit scene, but I, I don't think that's the case. Ooh, but, a, a, but a post credit scene, scene that could be something. They, they could shoot a post credit scene and not use it. Maybe they shot several to throw people off. Who knows? I don't know. They sure. just they said that. That the end of Infinity War or at the end of uh, Endgame, uh, they're setting another thing in motion, another big story in motion. Mm -hmm. Galactus would be a great big story. Mike, get that thing off your lip. Come on, man, you're driving me nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> all the other ones are fine. Get the one off your lip. Anyway, what are you talking about? Last words. Last. That was my last thoughts. Anybody else's last thoughts before we go into the game? Nope. None. I'm okay. Just really, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like me. I'm, I'm really hyped for this movie. I am all aboard the hype train. And I think we're going to see Dr. Hulk, too. I forgot about that. We're going to see, I almost positive we'll see Dr. Hulk. Yeah, I, I, at least an evolution of Hulk that um, will be the m more intelligent and more, um, I guess, personable. Fantastic. All right. All right, everybody. It's time for It's Game Time with the Mythwits. I'll be your game master this week, and we are playing Marvel Box Office Showdown. I will give each of you a choice of two Marvel movies, not MCU, Marvel. Uh, and you must tell me which one had the highest, the highest domestic box office earnings between the two. All earnings have been adjusted for inflation. Uh, if you get it correct, you get the point. The player with the highest points wins. There is a tiebreaker in case of a tie. So... Domestic box office draft adjusted for inflation. Um, so, are you guys ready for this? Is there a is there a theme? Yeah, Marvel movies. Yeah, Mar okay. Marvel movies. Like, come on, keep All on. Right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, just I, Marvel I, movies. I, All I of them. With egg on my face. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Mike, you're getting a little cocky there. All right. <clears throat> All right. So. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here we go. Um, I will. I will start with Will. I will start with Will. Will, I'm going to give you the first go with this. Um, All right. Let's see. Let me get this set up. Okay. So your first. Uh, your first two movies are Captain America: Civil War or Avengers: Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. That's not even any hesitation for that. The Avengers movies were always going to sell well. Hmm. That is correct, Will. You get the first one. Wow. All right, Mike. I, I honestly would have chosen the uh, differently, wrongly, they, as it will. They were, they were pretty close. Avengers Age of Ultron made $483 million. Captain America Civil War made $422 million. So not too not pretty close. Civil War was almost an Avengers movie. Come on. It was yeah, but it, Age of Ultron, despite how the reviews were, got a, a massive opening weekend. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, Mike, your first one. Yes. Guardians of the Galaxy or Deadpool? Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Unfortunately. Finally. That is wrong, Mike. What? Yeah. I think I'm going to go with it. Deadpool was, was very highly anticipated, is the key. People yeah, but they made it really high high Guardians, Guardians was a hit out of nowhere. Like, Guardians made up for it in, in subsequent weeks, but Deadpool just had, like, the slam dunk opening weekend. Wait, what was this? Did you, competition. did you say opening weekend or no, overall? No, I did not say no. opening weekend. Uh, o- over, uh, right. It's overall, That's... but opening weekend is such a large uh, contributor to that. I, w- I was... I was making sure you didn't, because I'm like, all right, but I honestly would have thought, because Deadpool was an you R-rated movie. You and just... I pulled the numbers off the end, off a of box office mojo. mojo? I'm, not, I'm not disputing it. I am, I am in shock. You should be. Do you see the shock on my face? No, I, God. I see something on your face. All right, so yeah, Deadpool <laughs> made $382 million. I'm rounding, of course, and Guardians of the Galaxy made $372 million. All right, Will. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man: Homecoming, or X-Men: The Last Stand. Uh, despite the fact that it was a much worse movie, I think I'm going to have to go with Last Stand on this because, especially X2, is generally viewed as the best of that trilogy. So, riding on that high, Last Stand would be a ton of money. Okay, that is wrong. Ooh. They're very, very close there. Spider-Man: Homecoming made 338 million. Uh, X-Men: Last Stand made 323 million. Hmm. Very close. They were very close. All right, Mike. Captain yes, America the Winter Soldier or Iron Man 2? I oh, I'm going to say Captain America Winter Soldier for Will's sake. <laughs> Captain America Winter Soldier and Mike it's wrong. Ah! Iron Man 2. Three. There's, so a, I, there's a pretty good difference here. Three hundred and fifty-eight million for Iron Man two, two hundred eighty-one for Captain America. So again, I would have used the same logic for that question I did for mine. Iron Man was such a really, really good movie that the second one just kind of rode, rode the coattails of that. Whereas First Adventure was was okay. I still enjoy. I put it mid-tier, but people yeah. like Iron Man so much more than First Adventure. Hmm. Like Winter Soldier was the movie that got people caring about Captain America in the MCU. Yeah, it's funny, I, funny, funny should say that, Will, because your next one is Captain America: The First Avenger versus Venom. Ooh. <laughs> um, you know what? I think I'm actually going to go with Venom on this because First Avenger was still toward the beginning of the, you know, Phase One. Except for Iron Man, none of the Phase One uh, well, Iron Man Avengers, none of the Phase One movies really had an outstanding box office performance, and people were really, really, really anticipating Venom. And all the reviews were like, hey, it's not great, but it's a lot of fun. Go see it. So I'm going to go with that. I'll give you that. That is, And I won't be happy. I won't be happy about it, but I'll give it to you. Captain America, I haven't seen Venom, but I'm certain Captain America was better. It was better. (laughs) Venom was fun. I saw Venom, and it sucked ass. (laughs) I I won't say it was a good movie, but it was entertaining. No, it was not a good movie. It was everything a good movie was not. Jesus Christ, Paul Nunn. Piss me off, man. (laughs) <laughs> he says, I turned off Spider-Man Homecoming. It was that bad. Oh, oh no. no taste, my here. man. Go away. <laughs> All right, Mike. Best Spider-Man movie yet. Doctor God, Strange. He's, he, he's going to get the Troll Award tonight. Right, he is. You get, hey, 
<laughs> I'm gonna cast you in trolls. All right, uh, Mike, you, you, Jay Libby, and Jonathan Reinhardt all get cast in the movie Trolls. The troll belt. <laughs> troll belt. All right, Mike, Doctor Strange or Logan? <sighs> I'm gonna. Ooh, oh, oh, you're fucking with me. You're fucking with my face. Um, I'm gonna say. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Doctor Strange only because the Logan property. Now, look at him. He's shaking his head. He's shaking his head. I know. All right. All right. You know what? All right, you'll disagree. But I'm, I'm just going to say that the, the that property was so huge and it was popular and Logan property was dying. They did make it rated R, but making it rated R doesn't earn as much money. That's my final answer. Mike, that is correct. Oh, yeah. uh, for those reasons. Girl. But yeah, Doctor Strange made two hundred and thirty-nine million. Logan made two hundred and thirty. They were still pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Hey, I'm on the board. Will. Hey, Will. <laughs> Will. Ghost Rider or Howard mm. the Duck? <laughs> oh. <laughs> two turrets in the ball. Oh, jeez. See, there's a curveball with this one because Howard the Duck is released so long ago that, it, that it adjusting for inflation is actually going to make this a lot closer yeah. than you would think it would be. Yep, agreed. Oh, jeez. And they were both so, so bad. So bad. The only thing worse than Ghost uh, Rider was Ghost Rider 2. <laughs> mm. uh, you know, I'm actually going with Ghost Rider despite the fact that all the inflation dollars that you know, the time difference is going to make up... Um, and just because I think even even among the cheesy 80s movies, Howard the Duck was too much for people, especially in a time when comic movies were not particularly in vogue except for the goofy Batman movies. I'm right. going on record to disagree because people wanted to see anyone, even a duck, have sex with uh, Leah, what's her name? Leah Remini? No, no. Leah Thompson. Leah Thompson. 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 Yeah. Right, so I, see, I don't even so, know who that is. So, Will, you're too young. Will, you're saying <laughs> Ghost Rider? Yeah, I'm going to go with Ghost Rider. And Mike, you're saying Howard the Duck? Yes. All right, well, it's Will's turn, and Will gets it right. And you know what? Nice. It's funny. Congratulations. Even, even adjusting for inflation, Howard the Duck only made $40 million. Ghost yeah. Rider made one hundred fifty-two. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mike, Ant-Man yeah. and the Wasp, or mm -hmm. Big Hero 6? Hmm. Both damn fine movies. I still have to see Big Hero 6. Oh, it was good. It was really good. It was, it was good. Yeah. You know? Hey, and if anybody's like watching this show, you know, we interviewed the two guys who made Big Hero 6 back in, I don't know, right. season three or something. So you might want to yeah. go back and watch that. It was good. Yeah, it was. I am going to say that it was Big Hero 6. Uh, and I'm just going with the. Um, earning potential of the chill of the churn. Okay, you're saying which which one? I'm sorry. I Big Hero Six. Room. Big Hero Six. Okay, Mike. Yes. Correct. Big Hero Six made two hundred and forty-three million. Ant-Man and the Wasp two hundred and twenty-two. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hey, well, hey, good thing you didn't pick any like movies with disparaging earnings. You know, thanks for keeping them all real close. They're not all real close. <laughs> Ghost Rider and Howard the Duck were a mile apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not right. when you adjust for inflation. <laughs> yeah, it was. The Howard the Duck. Yeah, yeah. Made that was adjusted for 40 inflation. Million. That was adjusted. Oh, dear. Yeah. A qu one quarter of what Ghost Rider made. All right. Um, where are we? Right, Will, it was only right? me who wanted to see Howard the Duck have sex with uh, Leah yeah. Thompson. Yeah. Marvel's The Avengers or Black Panther. <gasps> Black Panther. Marvel's The Avengers, in my opinion, is far and above the better movie, but Black Panther is the highest grossing Marvel movie, except for possibly Infinity War. Uh, but it mm -hmm. even beat Infinity War domestically, which also beat The Avengers. So, Black so you're Panther. saying Black Panther? Yep. Sorry. Really? Yep. What? Marvel's The Avengers, 694 million versus Black Panther, 689 million. Oh, wow. Oh! That's real close. I was surprised. I really thought that it beat that. I thought I thought that was uh, I thought that was uh, you know I, I might have been looking at the, the adjusting for inflation. Just... Yep. All right. <clears throat> so Mike. Yes. Ant Man, the the Jewish version of Ant Man. Ant Man. No, Ant Man <laughs> versus Thor. 
The first Thor, huh? Yes, the first Thor versus the first. That's a toughie. That's a toughie. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Thor was a hard sell. I think I I was. It was better. I think Ant Man was too, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Sure. Mm, I'm gonna go with uh, Ant Man um, against my better judgment. What would you say, Will? I I think I would go with Ant Man also. Okay. Just because, so they're both hard sells, but Ant Man is coming later in the in the. You know, in the arc of comic book movie popularity, so I yeah. think it has it has that going for it. Yeah, the uh, internet or people do not like Ooh. the Ant Man as much. Uh, Ant Man made one ninety seven. Thor made two hundred and three. Oh wow! I didn't know yeah. Thor made the. Oh, again, I'm adjusted for inflation. Too. I keep thinking of these numbers not adjusted for inflation. Too, as far as... And then I don't know. Do you have to? Uh, take into consideration are we talking about like it's it's still long tail earning potential with video and all that or is it only box office i assume it's only box office it's only box office okay domestic box all office right. Yeah. all right i said that <clears throat> so we have a winner Shut unless up. you guys want to play the tiebreaker and see if uh you can um you know beat each other out because you both will get a chance to vote on this all right well, I'll, I'll tell you what we'll let you do that but will where is the freaking thing? There we go. Will, you are our winner. Will won with three points to Mike's two. But we'll play the we'll play the tiebreaker just because it'll be fun. Helmsworth is prettier. <laughs> Helmsworth is prettier. He is. He is much prettier. Um, all right. So real quick, of the three movies, X Men, X Men First Class, and X Two, X Men United. Keep it to yourself, real quick. Uh, which do you think, or I uh, whatever? You, which which do you think made the most money? X Men, X Men okay. First Class, or X Two? You so you're you're going with the the newer of the X Men, all newer X Men franchises, just no, X Men. The movie X Men, which was the first X Men movie. Oh, the very X-Men. first. Okay. The very first one, X Men First Class, or the sequel to X Men, X Men Two, X Men United. Ooh, shit. And this is, a, again, adjusted for inflation. Oh. So should I just go ahead and give you my answer? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I, have, I have an answer, too, so it'll be, a, it'll be honest. Go ahead. I'm going to go with X2. Uh, X-Men was a really solid movie, and it, it, it was it's probably the reason that the, the movie that jump-started the current superhero movie craze, because that's what led into Spider-Man and eventually mm-hmm. the uh, MCU. Um, and while First Class was really good, I think X2 benefits from having a previous movie that was really good and also being a, a, a better sequel in its own right. And then also uh, First Class had to recover from X3, which was just awful. Yeah. I'm going to go with X-Men. X-Men. The first X-Men? one. Uh, X-Men, X-Men number one. All right. Yes. Hey, Will. Yep. X-Men, X2, X-Men United, 322 million. Uh, X Men made two hundred and sixty four, and X Men First Class made one hundred and sixty four. Wow! Yeah, and so that's... First Class really suffered from X three, and X two only got bolstered from X. So if you figure X Men is was probably the first. I could be wrong on this. Pretty sure it's the first superhero movie since the nineties Blade movies. Yep. Yep. All right, that's our show, folks. <laughs> That's that's all we got for tonight. Uh, Will, thanks for joining us for our, our Marvel games. You know you're always welcome to those shows. We're going to do a wrap-up show. Mike, when is it? It's uh, May 20-something or other. Yeah, uh, we're, it's going to be somewhere near the end of May. Um, yeah. We're going to have our friends from Offshoot Comics. Uh, they have a Kickstarter starting soon. I just got a text from uh, David Clark, who is uh, of uh, Offshoot Comics. Uh, they're getting their date soon for when um, uh, Starburns oh. is going to launch launch their um, their game. So uh, more news as that happens. Right, right. So we're going to come back. We'll have the guys from Starburns. We'll have Will, me, Mike, and we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about the uh, end game. But we want to give it at least a month because, like from today, because we want to give you all a chance to see it. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too soon because then we can be spoiler and say, hey, spoilers. And if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you know, you're not really, not really that big a fan. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing it twice over the weekend. Come on. Right. We're going to give you time. I mean, yeah. listen. 
You know, Paul, you'll have plenty of time to see it and, and, and troll right. about, ooh, right. it sucked. Ooh, right. Thanos, blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> Thanos just looks like he has scrotums on his face. Ooh. And, and we didn't even mention the fact that there's this meme out there that Ant-Man's going to go up Thanos' butt. Right? No, we, we didn't no, need to discuss that. It's, it's fine. No, we didn't. You, it's your favorite meme. No, hold on, I swear you've got it. You're, just, you are obsessing over this. No, I'm not obsessing over it. What I am, obs- I, I gave it up. I talked about it, like right after, um, right after Infinity War, like right after it, and I talked about it on this show, and I posted it on Facebook, and nobody, no traction, nothing. Nobody, nobody even like liked or commented on nothing. Right. And then all of a sudden it's a big internet meme. Now it's like, I was one of the first to say it. And I even said it better. I said he was going to Hulk was going to shoot him up his butt with a pea shooter. That's funnier. Anyway, (laughs) Anyway. it's in, it's in poor taste, Peter. Seriously though. I don't care. It's just, that's fine. uh, It's fine. It's funny. Where do you have the balls? Where, how big are your balls, and where do you wear them? It's like you wear your balls on your face. Like, yeah, that's that pot calm and kettle black. Anyway, all right, everybody, thanks for joining us, Mike. Uh, you wear your gift well. It wasn't supposed to be makeup, but you know, whatever. What? What, what are you talking about? It wasn't distracting at all. <laughs> oh, did something get on my face? I didn't. Oh, oh my God! Oh. Oh my goodness! I didn't know. Oh, oi, oi. oh my god! Oi. And with that, Jenny's gonna have to like pull the dicks off your face. All right, everybody, you've Wouldn't just be the first time. another awesome episode of the Mitzvits. <laughs> if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via, via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please do that, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread the Mitzvits love over the entire planet. Tweet us at MythWits and check out MythWits.com. MythWits is produced by Aether Forge Creation as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN and AetherForge.com for more cool stuff. Uh, MythWits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. And for God's sakes, don't snap half of it out of existence. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next Monday. Mike? That up there. Oh, that's the end. That's the end game. That is. That's it.